Karate friends, welcome to Classics in Color, your weekly dive into some of the ancient world's wackiest facts. I'm Mark Graves, and today we're going to be looking at some Latin poetry slash songs that are body and that are about celebration and drinking. As in most cultures, alcohol was very important to the ancient Romans, although they pretty much just drank wine. They thought that beer was vulgar and foreign and reserved for those that bastard Northern Europeans like the Germans and the Gauls. So they just drank wine, although if you watch my marijuana video, you'll know that they often enjoyed spiking it with a variety of other drugs. So it's wine, but it's not just wine. Now, tragically, we do not have any recordings of a 50 AD tavern in Rome. So we aren't for sure what they were doing or singing or what was going on But let me tell you a few things that we do know about Latin singing and celebratory poetry First off, there is a whole genre of poetry slash music called the Fescanine Verses And these are roughly what you might think of as folk music So the folk music of your regular old Romans and Italians There's lots of things that are interesting about these verses One is that they're all written in Saturnine meter don't get scared. So meter is just what the Romans and the Greeks used to write poetry. They didn't like rhyming. They thought it was vulgar and ugly. So instead what they did was they set up their lines of poetry so that it had a particular rhythm instead of a rhyme. So it might sound something like dum diddy dum dum and they would arrange all the syllables and the length of the syllables and the accentuation so that it would make that particular rhythm. So it sounds complicated and it can be, um, but it's not complete rocket science. What is interesting about this Saturnine meter is that it's not Greek. So in everything else, the Romans would just steal slash borrow the Greek meters. They would copy Homer and they would use his meter. But Saturnine is actually Latin and it's really, really old Latin. And so anything written in Saturnine just has this feel of being very old, very traditional feeling a little bit. Uh, in some cases, like, like country music, just like ye old kind of uh, deal. And and it was important in traditional festivals and ceremonies, so things like weddings, big feasts, big religious festivals, you would often have people performing important Saturnine meters or these Fescanine songs. And in some cases, the performers would dress up in costumes and wear masks. And a lot of these songs kind of had a dialogue, dialogue format where two people are either singing at each other or singing with each other, uh, at least two people, sometimes more. And so some people uh, think that maybe these performances were actually the precursor to Roman comedy. So I bring these Fescanine verses up because they are celebratory. People sing them when they're celebrating and feasting. And also because although they're very traditional, they can also be very silly and they can be very teasing and poke fun at a whole bunch of people. Now, sadly, we don't have tons of examples of the originals of these songs, but Catullus did write a poem that is modeled off of them. So this is Catullus 61. Let's take a look. O oh, Hymenaeus Hymen, O oh, Hymen Hymenaeus, bind thy brows with the flowers of fragrant marjoram, put on the marriage veil, hither, hither, merrily come, wearing on thy snow white foot the yellow shoe. Let not the merry Fescanine jesting be silent long. Let the favorite boyfriend give away nuts to the slaves when he hears how his lord has left his love. They will say that you, perfumed bridegroom, are unwilling to give up your old pleasures, but abstain. Yo, Hymen Hymenaeus, yo, yo, Hymen Hymenaeus. So a couple of things there. Hymen is the Roman god of marriage. You may notice that his name sounds familiar to a particular female uh, part that <laughs> exists for some people. Uh, and you can see that there's a lot of Roman marriage customs being referenced in here. So this is a song that could potentially be sung at a wedding. And the last bit there is very teasing, poking fun at the groom and the bride that now they have to give up all their other lovers, boyfriends, and and girlfriends. So it's not clear if this song was ever actually performed at a real wedding, but it's clearly in reference to, he references the Fescanine verses and it's modeled after its form and its content. So hopefully it's giving us a pretty good idea of what one of these 
celebratory songs would look like. Now I want to jump quite a bit in time to In Taberna or In the Tavern. So this was written somewhere around 12, 1300 AD. So this is medieval Latin. And medieval Latin is very, very different from a classical Latin, that stuff that Catullus was writing in. It's sort of like a modern English compared to Shakespeare English, just very different animals, although it is still technically the same language. So like I said, it's written 12, 1300s-ish AD and supposedly it's written by a bunch of bored university students who had learned medieval Latin so that they could communicate professionally with others. Um, but instead of using Latin for the great cause of scholarly commentary, they used it for the great cause of entertainment in a tavern. So let's take a look at what they came up with. So it starts off, let's read the Latin first here. In taberno quando sumus non caramus quid sit humus, sed ad ludum properamus cui semper id sudamus. So <laughs> you can see right away that this rhymes. So we have moved into rhyming away from meter, quite a big change. And this roughly translates to something like, in the tavern, you know, when we're in the tavern, we don't care what country we're in, but we hurry to the game. And this is like a dice game or some sort of chance gambling game at which we always lose. So it goes on like that for a bit, describing what a tavern is like and all of the activities that they're up to in there. And then it gets to this counting bit. So it says, Semel bibunt pro captivis, post hag bibunt ter pro vivis. Quarter pro Christanis cunctis, quinquis pro fidelibus defunctis. So again, this translates to something like, at the same time, they drink for the prisoners, and after that, they drink for the living. Four times for all the Christians, five for the faithful dead. So it goes on like that, counting for quite a bit, and then it starts to degenerate a little, and the lines get really short, and we just get... Bibit pauper et grotus, bibit exil et ignotus, bibit puer, bibit canus, bibit chrysal, et decanus, bibit soror, bibit frater, bibit anus, bibit ater, bibit ista, bibit illa, bibit centum, bibit mille. The boy, the old man, uh, etc, etc, and then finally you just get that guy, this guy, a hundred and a thousand drinks. So like I say, it degenerates a little bit there, but it gets uh, pretty fun. So this song is hysterical and somebody needs to recreate like a Latin medieval tavern so all of us can just hang out there and sing in Taberna. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Special thank you as always to subscribers and to Patreon members. I hope to see all of you again next week. Karate.